Hey everyone, welcome back to Notion Lab. A rotary attachment, third axis, fourth axis, all words used to describe a device that allows you to engrave circular objects on a CNC or laser engraver. I've found a lack of clear information on how to set up and use a rotary attachment, especially on the cheaper machines. Although I'm using a K40 laser cutter, the information should work on most lasers and CNC's. This will be a two-part series. Part one will cover a basic understanding on how a rotary axis works and the settings needed to set up one, especially on the K40 laser. Part two will cover my 3D printed rotary attachment and modifying my machine to fit. Using the K40 as an example, the machine moves in two axes the X and Y. Now since the control board does not have a port for another axis, we can disconnect either the X or the Y axis to connect our rotary. It's more common to disconnect the Y axis and that's the one I'll be using. Visualize it this way. When you're facing the laser, if this is the image to be engraved, the laser head will move in the X direction or left to right starting at the bottom of the image. As it gets further along, it will also move in the Y axis or downward to complete the engraving. Now imagine if instead of moving down, it rotated. That is what happened when you remove the connections for the Y stepper and connect your rotary stepper motor. Quick tip, never disconnect a stepper motor while powered. There is a strong possibility that it will damage both the stepper and the board. Make sure your machine is off before disconnecting anything. When you connect a rotary axis, you need to change a few settings to make it work properly. Those settings are your steps per millimeters, but uh, more on that later. Let's talk about the physical rotary attachment. There are a few options on the market, but generally speaking, there's two type, roller and chuck type. There are a list of pros and cons for both, but for example, the roller type can be slimmer, so if you have a smaller machine, it makes more sense, but if the thing you're engraving doesn't have enough weight, it has a tendency to not want to roll. The chuck type is really good at securing your workpiece, but it can be really large, and at least in my case, I have to change my steps per millimeter for every new diameter device that I want to engrave, but honestly, I prefer the chuck type overall. Any rotary device is a specialized tool, so most of them are really expensive for being a relatively simple device. Some higher priced machines comes with their own rotary axis and the software settings to operate it. As I mentioned before, I'm using a K40 laser, and some options do exist, but most are not great. I could not find a decent one at an affordable price, so I designed and 3D printed one. Links will be provided in the description. In part 2 of this series, I will talk about the design and show the assembly of my 3D printed one. But for now, let's look at the settings needed to set up the rotary properly. As stated before, you need to adjust your steps per millimeter. There are a few simple math equations to get there. I'm using K40 Whisper. It's super easy to use and if you own a K40, it's an order of magnitude better than the stock software. It goes without saying that you need something to engrave. Grab yourself a cup or a mug that's not plastic and wrap it in masking tape. I'm using a cardboard tube from an industrial shrink wrap. It's roughly 85 by 134 millimeters. You also need a 20 millimeter test square file. You can create one easily in Inkscape or just download mine. Again, links will be below. Align the laser head roughly to the left of your workpiece and make sure your laser is focused to the top of your item to be engraved. There are a few videos out there on how to get your laser's best focal length, but for my K40, it's roughly 68 millimeters from the X-Rail. Set your cutting speed to 6 millimeters per second and set the laser power to 10%. Hit vector cut. You will need some sort of flexible metric ruler. I'm using a cheap sewing tape. Now measure the square. The X direction should be accurate, but the Y won't be. Mark down the Y measurement. In my case, 
it was 68 millimeter. So I need to divide the input length, which is 20 millimeters, by the actual engrave length, which is 68 millimeters, giving me my scale factor, which is 0.312. This math is specific to the K40 machine due to K40 Whisper. Before changing any settings, it's a good idea to back up your setting file just in case. Go to File, Backup Setting File. Under Settings, General Settings, Y Scale Factor, enter the number you got from earlier, in my case 0.312 millimeters. If you don't hit Save, when you close the app, the settings will return to normal the next time you open K40 Whisper. This is good for one time engravings, so I'll choose not to save for now. Exit the settings and do another vector cut. The square should be closer to being true. If not, you can make fine adjustments by changing the numbers from earlier. At this point, I like to do a circle test to make sure. I have a 20mm circle test and a detailed 100mm circle test. Once dialed in, it's a good idea to write down the number for future use. As I mentioned earlier, the chuck type rotary, you have to do this process for every new item with a different diameter. You may notice that I cut a part of the bottom of my machine for the rotary. Join me in part 2, where I will show how to get the 3D printed rotary and how I mod my laser to fit. But that's it for now, and thank you for your time. I hope you find this video useful, consider sharing it on social media if you did, and a thumbs up will help the channel a ton. Subscribe for more content and see you on part 2. Later days.